Oh, are you trying to do something? Oops. Oh, are you playing a game? Is anyone trying to sleep? Anybody? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so bad. Hey, hey, hey. Hi. If you've ever wanted to be a cat, Stray is the game for you. Furries everywhere must have trembled with excitement when the game was announced. And in case there is any doubt, yes, this game is for perverts. The developers started with the loose concept of using the Kowloon Walled City as a basis for a game, then decided that a cat would be the perfect protagonist to navigate such a setting. It sprawled into a fun and surprisingly moving cat simulator from there. A large portion of the game is simply being a cat, and most cat behaviors are accurately modeled. Wrecking people's belongings, knocking things over, disrupting and ruining lives, sleeping all day while other people have to work for their damn living, meowing for no reason, and even slumping when putting on a harness. As a cat owner, photographer, and parent, the charm of this is obvious, and I suspect that the game's appeal might diminish if you don't have a fondness for these animals in real life. But the game does have a structure beyond just being the best boy possible. It's hard to define what the game is because it keeps evolving as it goes, but it revolves around reuniting a cat with its family. In the beginning, a string of simple objectives leads the player around the city, doing things like delivering ponchos or spilling paint in order to get to the next step. There's room to explore, but the progression is mostly linear, with characters directly explaining where to go or even walking you there. This is fine because the game isn't a metroidvania. It's more about solving problems using simple logic, and the environmental puzzles often have a half-life quality to them. You have to find and then position objects just so to reach event, or disrupt one thing to get access to another, and it's all done with movements a cat could plausibly make. There's not much in the way of powers or upgrades. You have a robot helper who does some occasional hacking, but he mostly functions like Navi and gives advice. The main enemies are head crabs. They're just head crabs, and your challenge is simply to avoid them. They first appear in linear escape sequences that force you to make split-second decisions and dash for your life. Or like you just used the litter box. Or like you're just bored. Sometimes the rush is preceded by a vantage point that allows you to plan your path beforehand, and the decisions you make in those early moments will determine whether the whole run is successful or not. It is possible to die in these sequences, and for some reason it's a thousand times more disturbing than when your protagonist is a human. Because it's a cat. Later, the game does provide a weapon for exploding the crabs, but it has a very short fuse before it overloads and leaves you temporarily defenseless. It can be challenging to time it carefully enough to hit every crab, and using it can inadvertently release more of them from nearby eggs, so the tension is still high. One might expect this weapon to become a core mechanic in the game and that there would be collectible expansions to make it last longer, but no. A chapter later, the game has reshuffled itself again and everything revolves around stealth. Colonel, I've infiltrated the ba- I'm gonna take a nap. It's hard to get bored when a game keeps morphing like this, and it left me satisfied even though the length was barely five hours. I had similar thoughts about Moondawn, and I appreciate that these indie developers don't seem to feel the need to pad their games out the way big studios often do. Stray was made by a new team who were crafting cat gameplay that there isn't exactly a known template for, and they were very successful in pulling that off. The tutorial establishes almost everything you need to know quickly, and for a world so dense with detail, the visual design makes it pretty clear what you can and can't jump on. Your attention is drawn to platforms by neon lights or air conditioner units with streamers on them, while unreachable objects are covered in spikes. There is a problem with the camera when platforming in the city, with the cat's low perspective and the tight alleyways leading to some very awkward angles and cramped views. I don't usually get motion sickness, but cranking the camera around these spaces made me dizzy. Some segments use a fixed camera to provide a clearer view, and I think the game would have benefited from more hands-on camera work like that. There's also no map, which can make it hard to return to certain characters to finish tasks. The slum streets can be samey, and it's hard to build a mental map when almost all of them are so uniformly tight. There's never too large an area to explore at any given time, so it doesn't take long to check room by room, but there's more guesswork to the backtracking than there should be. There are also some pretty serious bugs still. A lot of sequences depend on scripted character movements, and when they don't activate, the player can get completely trapped. Thankfully, this character fixed itself after exiting and reloading the game, but it was nerve-wracking to wonder if my progress was lost in the interim. But considering that this is a small, fledgling studio, the issues are easily forgivable. The thing the developers were most successful at was leveraging the perspective of a cat in their storytelling. The premise is that you explore a post-apocalyptic world and piece together what went wrong. It's not exactly a novel idea, and in fact it might be the most standard type of story a modern game could have but the alienation that comes from the cat perspective makes this one unique. All of those cat mannerisms do serve a point beyond just being cute, because they affirm that you are a living thing, the only living thing, in an otherwise dead world. 
And this may sound melodramatic, but roaming this wasteland in such a vulnerable form makes you feel how precious the life of your character is, and life in general by extension, which is a sentiment that robot NPCs come to express. Everyone just wants this cat to make it. It's a very simple story with minimal dialogue, but it works mostly because of how effectively the team was able to insert your soul into this feline body. Stray is a small game, not likely to win Game of the Year, but I loved it. Maybe this is just the cat parasites in my brain talking, but if you have cats, like cats, or are cats, you'll probably love it too. My biggest gripe is that the protagonist, while good, is not the best boy. So I fixed this by uploading my son into the databanks. I think we can all agree that this is better. Having a parasite is better. You should buy your cat whatever they want. Only the fancy food. Make your house out of cardboard. Put bird feeder inside. More box on floor.